Let's go, Jacksonville Jaguar fans. Are you kidding me? Did Trevor Lawrence hit another gear? I know it's one preseason game, but man, I was really, really impressed with Trevor. And one of my hottest takes has always been I'm not really that big of a T-Law guy, especially now that the QBs in the division has gotten so much better since he has joined. But my favorite thing from this game is that we finally got a good new kickoff return, and Parker Washington has some real juice. I don't even know if he's going to be involved with this Jaguars offense all that much because, well, uh, this is a guy that is behind on the depth chart, and we're going to be talking about BTJ a little bit later as well. Um, and look, I, I'm, I'm a BTJ homer uh, from my college roots, but I like Parker Washington. I felt last year when I watched him, he had a lot of sizzle. And you see on this play, um, he had to break quite a few tackles. This wasn't some well-designed kickoff return. This was a lot of start-stopping, making guys miss. And when you're doing this versus NFL athletes, I understand it is uh, the preseason. It's impressive. Now, the ball security problem there is an issue. One of my favorite running backs in fantasy is uh, Trevor Etienne, right? Uh, we'll get to Tank Bigsby a little bit later. This is just really good football. You know, you're, you're in a three-by-two in essence. There's four guys over here, three guys over here. You run the Gabe Davis route. This has always been his role, the clear out, all right? So Gabe Davis holds his safety, and that gets you one-on-one -on -one right here, T-Law, uh, to ETN, and of course, they have as good a chemistry as anybody in the league going back to their college days, and that's just going to be a touchdown every single time. So, my favorite thing about the Jaguars receiving core is they have two deep guys and two underneath guys, right? So, you have Brian Thomas Jr., who they drafted first round at LSU, Evan Ingram, probably one of the better underneath tight ends, you have Gabe Davis. And then you have, um, I don't think that's Christian Kirk. Is that Kirk right there? I, whatever the case may be, uh, this is what they want their offense to look like. Vertical stretcher, vertical stretcher with a bunch of inbreakers, right? So they're actually running smash here to the bottom. All right, so Trevor starts off looking left, all right? One of the worst types of situations you could be in here uh, is this. Okay, um, this corner's being able to play both. He has perfect depth that he could actually get back here on BTJ if he wants to, or if Trevor throws this late, uh, he could, you know, crash in on this. And even if you throw this, yeah, he could fit this in. You're not really getting a whole lot of yardage. And let's just say you throw this hard, it deflects. That makes it an easier interception for two. So he's working backside to the inbreakers, um, and he sits – very nice in this pocket. There's pressure right there, but Trevor is a beast of an athlete back there. And he throws an absolute missile, bang, right into Gabe Davis. This Jaguars receiving core could really be lethal. All right, so I know this isn't Trevor anymore, but we've got to talk about Brian Thomas Jr., y'all. And I'm going to be real with you. Uh, for those that don't know my background, I... I'm an LSU YouTuber. That's really how I got started. Went to LSU, all that stuff. And I actually grade uh, every LSU prospect I possibly can. And I try to be as objective as I can because, you know, I watch every single rep uh, you know, on my YouTube channel, Power Hour LSU. And I'll be honest, I, I am I, – I love BTJ. I really do. Did I feel he is going to come into the NFL this rookie season and just dominate? No. A lot of his production came uh, at LSU versus weaker competition. But when you actually watch the games, he had a bunch of bad pass interference luck. He had a bunch of uh, runs and stuff like that called back uh, versus better teams. And there were times where he was getting open versus better teams, but they were you know throwing the football to Malik Neighbors or Kyron Lacey, who's probably going to be an early round draft pick next year. BTJ is the most athletic LSU football player of all time. Now, think about all the great LSU athletes that did the combine, Patrick Peterson, obviously Odell Beckham, 
and he had the highest RAS of any LSU football player ever. And the funny thing about it was he kind of started football later. He was more of a basketball guy. So year three prospect, already out, first round draft capital, doesn't have to be the guy. And because you have all these underneath pieces and Gabe Davis as well, you're giving him good mentors as well. That is an excellent, excellent throw, but an even better catch. So now we get to here. And Tank, man, one of my biggest misses last year was how bad Tank Bigsby was. But maybe he's like BTJ. You know, year three prospect, young. He was unfreaking believably dominant at Auburn behind bad offensive lines. This is ridiculous running. Now, are you getting this run if Chris Jones is in the middle um, and 54, Carl Loftus? Probably not. DT loses uh, backside contain right here, and Tank is just able to run through it, all right? And actually, it wasn't the DT. It was the, the safety who just missed him. Look at these broken tackles. Tank says, get off me. I What I saw at Auburn was not what he was last year. The drops, all that, were just killers. And I've always been a Devin Duvernay guy. I always have been. I, I, I think he's got some ability. So, you know, does he earn touches? I don't know. But C.J. Beathard, again, while he's getting crushed, look at this ball location right here. I mean, in a 50-50 straight head-up situation, bang. And it's a tutty. And I always love watching desire plays. This is a good play by 97, the end right here for Kansas City. But Dearness Johnson says, my name is Dearness freaking Johnson. Ah, 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 bounds it in. So now we're about to talk about a real legendary quarterback here, Mac Jones. And he is legendary for a few reasons, right? He has one of the best QB seasons in college football history in 2020. Statistically, according to QBR, that is. I, I don't know if I agree with that. But... Mac was really good in college, and then he became the most legendary person in football cards, okay? I've been doing a football card show for years on the NoOffSeason.com network, proud to be a part of that network, and he, a few years ago, had a card go for $100,000. Now, it was his absolute rarest card, but it's not worth $100K now. It might not even be worth ten k and it was some child that pulled it and literally took it to someone, and they gave him $100,000 cash, okay? Uh, and I think he graded a 10, ironically. But this is an absolute seed for Mac Jones. Let me ask you this, Jaguar fans. Who do you think is the better option at backup, Mac or Beathard? Let me know. But this, I mean, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Mac a replay. Play, play, and this is an absolute seed with a guy coming right at your face. Pause. Pause. Ha, ha, ha. But, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, this pocket is clean enough. The, the, the guy came free later. Uh, but still, ridiculous throw. Now, Jaguar fans, I do a lot of Colt stuff, and they absolutely blow my stuff up. So I'm going to keep doing Colt content. I do a lot of Texan stuff as well. So comment below if you want to see more Jag videos. And let me know what you think of this offense next year, okay? I might be undervaluing the heck out of you guys. It is power hour. Yeah. Oh, boom. Floating in your face. Some other videos. Check it out.